Nick Freeman, the lawyer otherwise known as Mr Loophole, who has been following this story with great interest right from the very beginning, joins us now. Good morning to you, Nick. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. So, first of all, your reaction that in the last year, 762 people were fined for urinating in this specific lay-by on the A41. My reaction is that that those monies um, belong to the taxpayer. They should be returned. um, But they have been obtained, um, in my view, criminally. It's obtaining a a pecuniary advantage by deception. Um, It's quite clear. I've been consistent throughout in in relation to what the law is. uh, And I challenge Decorum Council to produce the legal advice that they say they've received. Um, I've been privy to the definition of litter, and it makes it absolutely crystal clear that when councils interpret particular words such as litter, they need to use the natural meaning that Parliament intended, um, and they need to consider the mischief that was intended to be remedied. And when we're talking about prosecution under the environment... Nick, Nick, we're starting to lose you. I don't know if you can move to a slightly better signal. It's right, important let, we hear let, every word. Let, 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 let me try and move to a different place. I'm not, I'm not normally where, where I am normally. I'm Jonathan. Sorry. That's okay. um, is that is that better? Uh, it seems to be at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, the the definition is is, is quite clear. Um, and if you think about environmental protection uh, and what it's designed to achieve, um, would it, It's designed to protect the environment from people discarding things like cans, paper, those sorts of tangible things. That's not to say under certain very limited circumstances, liquid cannot be regarded as a litter. It can. So, for example, if you urinate in a town centre against a shop window um, and it causes some uh, defacement, then arguably there could be a prosecution. But interestingly, when one looks at the definition, and these definitions have been prepared um, by high court judges, law law judges, um, but they make it absolutely clear. They draw a parallel between someone throwing a a stick for a dog and the dog failing to retrieve it and saying that could be classified as litter. Obviously not. We need to be sensible about our interpretations. And they then go on to give the second example as an illustration of how ludicrous it would be if, for example, someone was caught short and had a wild wee. They say this is clearly not what Parliament intended under any circumstance. Now, you and I have discussed this many times on on this programme, and it's quite clear, um, and I've been consistent, that um, urinating, having a wild wee, is not litter. It cannot be litter under these particular circumstances in this particular place. And Decorum Council um, have steadfastly continued to fine people. They've ignored the legality. And in so doing, in my view, they are committing a criminal offence. As I say, it's fraud. And uh, there needs to be a police investigation. Uh, Anyone who has been fined for urinating in that particular lay-by or in similar circumstances should contact the council and demand their money back by return and if not they should consider taking civil action against the council and i would urge all those people to make individual complaints to the police that there is clearly a public interest in this and the council are ignoring what the statute's purpose is its intention and what the law actually is um which is really very serious it's all it's all very well saying the council are using the public as a, a cash cow but but obviously the law is there to protect everybody the council the public at large And we have a situation here where the public are being abused, they're being taken advantage from, of, in my particular view, by criminal conduct by decorum council in continuing to ignore the legality of the Environmental Protection Act and continuing to find people. Is Um, it possible possible to accuse a council um, as a body of criminality? And to, I mean, what, what are the police supposed to do about decorum borough council, for example? Well, there are obviously people in decorum uh, council behind this policy who have uh, probably participated to some extent in in the the cases that we've we've talked about on the programme who have insisted that the council continue to find people. Um, They will obviously 
presumably they'll have sought some legal advice or say they'll have sought some legal advice. Those people have made the decision, the decision makers um, in relation to the continuance of finding people are the people that the police need to speak to. And, and ultimately, I, I'm quite confident that the chief executive must know about what is happening on this particular lay-by because the, public, the publicity has been very extensive. Uh, and ultimately, the buck stops with him. And, uh, well, it's it, a her, actually, but... Uh... It, it, I beg, you, beg, you, beg her pardon. Uh, the buck stops with her. Um, she can't say, I've turned a blind eye, I know nothing about it. She is the chief executive. It is ultimately her responsibility. So there will be individuals who will be criminally, potentially criminally liable for the conduct of the council. Um, you can't simply make a decision and then hide behind the corporate uh, entity of the council and say, oh, I'm protected. Uh, no, you're not. So my, my view is there, should, there needs to be a criminal complaint against the council, against the chief executive, uh, and the police will then investigate it and decide whether or not um, there is a criminal course of conduct. And, and what will be very interesting for me is, you know, the Quorum Council, so far as I'm aware, haven't yet been on your program, Jonathan, and I know that you have invited them to be on. I know that they've seen the the um, the, the legality, the advice, the legal advice um, in terms of the definition. And, and I just wonder upon what basis they have decided to continue finding people, finding in them in the first place, and continue to find them um, in, in a massive way when they must know that this is actually illegal. If it's illegal, it's criminal, and there needs to be an investigation. And, and if it reaches the threshold, it's certainly in the public interest. If there's more than a 50% chance of conviction, there should be prosecutions, and, and they need to refund the money to the taxpayer. Now, as you are aware, there is a, uh, a barrister that has provided um, legal advice to councils on this particular issue. We've approached that that barrister who has, I've had a, a separate conversation with him. Um, he has confirmed to us that he was approached by Decorum Borough Council and was asked one very specific question that he answered. The one very yep. specific question that he was asked was, can littering, sorry, can urination ever be classified as littering? To which his yep. answer was yes. Yep. However, he says that there was no further questioning, there was no elaboration sought, and in his legal view, he absolutely agrees with you that when it comes to using this legislation to find people for urinating into the bushes in a lay-by at the side of the road, that is not what this legislation was ever intended to be used for. Um <laughs> They, I'm sure, to Coran Borough Council, would argue that that is the legal advice they have sought. No, that, that, it, it's a little bit like the investigation in the post office, isn't it, Jonathan? Um, when the, you hear the chief executive uh, actually ask the questions and, 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 and uh, identify the answers that they, she wants for the questions that are going to be asked. They, they can't hide behind the fact that, oh, yes, we were told it was legal, it was legitimate. Because the, the obvious point is, under what circumstances, they are already on notice that it is illegal to prosecute people for wild weeing. Um, they're on notice about that. If they haven't asked the relevant question, in my view, that, that is evidence against them in terms of a criminal investigation. Because anyone with half a brain, Jonathan, would say, Please explain, when you say yes, under what circumstances is it legal and under what circumstances is it illegal? And if you ask a question in such a, a limited way to get the answer that you want to have, you're clearly trying to cover something up, aren't you? Because you're not showing any real interest or really intent, any real intent to find out how we need to deal with this problem. You know, um, and what, what is it, what's fascinating, Jonathan, is, I, you know, I don't know, but look around the country, the, the, the roads are strewn with litter. Um, and you would like to think, wouldn't you, quite apart from anything else, that the council will be expending their resources on picking litter up as opposed to stopping people who are having wild wheeze. Um, you know, and, and look at all the animals, the dogs, the sheep, the cows, all the other things that um, contribute to urine. And also just consider this for one moment. You know, we're concerned with the environment. Isn't it better, actually, to have a wild wee than actually to take the contents of your urine back home and flush it down the toilet. It's more environmentally friendly to actually discard it on some grass or on a bush. 
that, that, that actually helps the environment, it helps the planet, rather than flushing it. I appreciate that's a different argument, but as we're concerned with you know, environmental protection, it is a relevant point, isn't it? What would you say to people, and it may well be that, and we have, of course, invited to Coram Borough Council to appear on the programme today, and we've had no response to that invitation. But if the Coram Borough Council were on the programme now, they may well say to you that as far as they are concerned, they have a duty to try and look after um, hard-working council taxpayers that live in the decorum area who are sick and tired of people using that particular lay-by to urinate in. It's unpleasant. It smells. It is taking a beautiful part of the countryside at the side of a, of a dual carriageway and it's ruining it. And that's why they're giving out these fines to try and do what they believe is the right thing on behalf of council taxpayers. How would you respond to that? But, but there may be a moral argument there. And yes, they have their duty, but they can't create law. They can't twist the law to suit something that it's not intended to, to be there for, to serve the purpose that they're trying to, to achieve. So if the law isn't there, then they need to consider drafting some local legislation or they need to try and petition Parliament to change the law. But you can't say, well, we've got a law here and it sort of it, it, it touches it in a, a vague sort of way. We know it actually doesn't. We can't raise money this way, but we're going to use this legislation because it's a misuse. It's a misinterpretation. What I'm suggesting is it's actually deliberate. Because I would like to see from them the advice, the, the request for the opinion they've asked for, and that would have to be detailed, wouldn't it? It would have to cover this specific instance, because that's what we're talking about. Because the, you, you've illustrated to me they've put signs up. Um, and I, I'd like to see the advice they were given. I'd like to see how they can justify the fact that they have honestly obtained money from the taxpayer as opposed to dishonestly. Now, you suggested earlier that you believe this has now um, moved into the area of criminality and you suggested yep. that people should complain to the police. Yeah. Practically, how do you see that working? Do you, do you believe that people who've previously been fined should now call their local police force? I, I do. I think there'll be a, a, many, many people. I mean, we know there are from the numbers, from the statistics you've quoted. I think there'll be many people who will be justifiably enraged by the fact that they've been caught short. I mean, when you, when you think of the, and, you know, the alternatives, that they're not particularly palatable and they're potentially dangerous. And they will be enraged by what's happened. And they've had to fork out, um, I think it's £100, whatever the fine is, and that they will feel, actually, yes, I feel very comfortable here. Um, I'm going to make a complaint to the police because I've now been told, I've heard, that this is potentially criminal. The police are there to investigate. Uh, and there is a clear public interest when a council is pursuing um, finding people when it's unlawful. And that, that is exactly what's happening. The, the council is taking money off, off the people in this area or people who are driving through this area in an unlawful way. And that, in my view, is criminal. It certainly warrants a police investigation. It's deliberate. They're turning a blind eye to what the law is. They're, what they're doing is wishful thinking. I wish we had the legislation to deal with this because it raises money. Um, and they're not entitled to do that. And, that and, the, and the police are there to investigate it. And it, it will be fascinating, won't it, if there is an investigation? And I, I do think there will be. Um, you know, what, what, what ultimately will happen? Nick, thank you very much indeed, as always, for your time. And uh, we will continue to keep you abreast of any developments. Thank you. There's Nick Freeman, the lawyer otherwise known as Mr Loophole.